Oh boy, oh boy, here we go again. Back to work. It's Monday evening, getting ready for Tuesday's trading session. Got a short week and a holiday weekend right around the corner. I got a lot of great trades setting up on my radar for tomorrow. I'm going to cover all my favorite trades in tonight's video. That way you have a game plan to make some money on Tuesday. As always, though, before we jump in and get this party going, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss tomorrow night's video. And if you enjoy the video, if you enjoy the content every evening, hit that like button for me. Appreciate you guys tuning in but enough of the intro let's get ready for Tuesday Tuesday's not going to trade itself and I'll tell you there's a lot of really nice trades setting up here on our radar for tomorrow S&P NASDAQ are both bullish right now I would love to trade some breakouts we definitely have breakout opportunities here as we push higher here but you'll also notice too right there's a lot of resistance up overhead there's also money to make on those reversals going down as well we got breakouts we've got reversals reversals on the S&P and the NASDAQ on my radar for tomorrow and then oil oil is probably the oil is definitely the oddball here of the group we are bearish right now into a trading range I would love to get short on some bounces up around those highs or trade that breakout going lower down to 108 buyers do not have an easy road ahead but that doesn't mean it can't change for tomorrow so we'll definitely keep our eyes open for the long side but you'll see tonight once we get into that into this uh, chart on the oil tonight you'll see why the buyers might not have as easy job as the sellers on Tuesday now speaking of Tuesday before we jump into each individual chart let's make sure we're all on the same page for tomorrow we do have some big news tomorrow we've got the PMI composite number at 945 the new home sales number at 10 o'clock and we got Jerome Powell at 1220 uh, not testimony but a headline or a or a keynote speech at 12.20 tomorrow. The biggest event you want to worry about tomorrow is definitely that PMI composite number at 9.45, and obviously that Jerome Powell, he's the head of the Fed. We're talking about inflation right now, raising rates, everything the Fed's talking about lately, so we definitely anticipate these are going to be the two big potential market-moving events here for tomorrow. What I really like about this layout for tomorrow is nice and early in the session to get us going and then hopefully a nice little shot in the arm to give us a nice afternoon session tomorrow afternoon as well one thing you do want to keep in mind of course is whenever we have Jerome Powell either tomorrow or we've got Lael Brainerd on Wednesday anytime we have a Fed speaker like this sometimes the market does kind of wait to see what they're going to hear from him or her so just be aware tomorrow remember the old metaphor uh, trading is like riding a bicycle if it's you know it's better it's easier when it's moving so just be aware of that as we get maybe the later half of that morning session tomorrow just be aware of that market personality if things slow down 10 30 10 45 11 o'clock tomorrow you know what they're slowing down for they're slowing down ahead of that Jerome Powell so don't force trades if it does slow down tomorrow don't force trades into that lunchtime hour save those bullets for the afternoon as the markets react to what comes out of Jerome Powell's uh, mouth also be aware too tomorrow night will be the last video newsletter of this week just so you know there will be no newsletter uploads on Wednesday and Thursday as as we go into the holiday weekend, we'll come back and resume our normal schedule after the kickoff of the summertime season. Next Monday is the Memorial Day holiday. So be aware of that. So tomorrow night, final newsletter of the week. I hate to leave you guys hanging, but not to worry. We will obviously resume our schedule after the holiday on next Tuesday evening. 945 1220 those are the big market movers for tomorrow keep those on your radar back to our charts here s p nasdaq crude oil everything's ready to go glad to see you are ready right along with me now real quick whether you trade one of these markets or you trade all of these markets, I'm going to cover my favorite trades on each one of these charts tonight. You'll learn something new throughout the entire video lesson. I'll provide different trade variations, different advanced setup ideas as we get deeper into this video. And no matter which market you trade, there'll be learning and earning opportunities throughout the entire lesson tonight. I do try to save the best stuff towards the end, so I'll give you some reasons to stick around all the way to the the end of this video all right let's jump right in let's go S&P NASDAQ and crude oil we'll jump into the e-mini S&P first kick this thing off here what's the most important thing happening right now here on the on the e-mini 
for the most part, the most important thing we have right now is we had a very strong pop up into a trading range this morning. The buyers, of course, held and ran with another strong move higher. Anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we always anticipate a pullback and a retest of that high. And that's pretty much where we are right now. Now the question is, is where do we go next? Do we break out and go higher up around that 4,000 round number? I would imagine if these buyers can break higher tomorrow, I would imagine the 40, 19, and three quarters the next big objective for those buyers but also too we are major you know we are sitting right at major resistance major top this 75 and a half level this is a major major prior low just be aware that is a prior low from a boy a few months ago i think it was boy at least a month ago that's a major major low at 39.75 so really at the same time we've retested that high now it makes perfect sense for a move back off of that high back in into that trading range and potentially slingshotting all the way back down to some big moves down that we saw last week. So again, most important thing right now is it's a strong pop-up. That strong pop-up now has retested that high. Now, where do we go from here? Do we break out from there or do we roll over and make that and make that move lower? Now, breakouts. Breakouts look pretty likely right now, but we'll see what we get here. There are a couple different breakout patterns I can see here right now on the S&P. There are some different breakout patterns I would look for on the NASDAQ. So I'll do a couple of them here on the E-mini. We'll do a couple of them here on the NASDAQ. Be aware, though, when you see the NASDAQ, you'll see why I say the NASDAQ can has a little bit of a different game plan for the breakouts going higher. There are two basic breakouts going higher here I'm looking for here tomorrow, knowing that, again, that 19 and 3 quarters is our next big objective. One breakout pattern is always going to be that 1, 2, 3 breakout setup. Now, 1, 2, 3 breakouts, here is a really good example of a trading range with a 1, 2, three breakout, right? See how there's three legs to it? One, two, three. Whenever we get that one, two jump, right? That jump out of that moving at, or off the moving average out of that trading range, that tells us now the odds are very good. They're going to pull back and retest that high. I can buy that pullback. So if I can get up, if I can get these buyers here to come in and hold a pullback for me and then jump, right? And really jump through that, right through the top of that range, and most importantly, up above some of these prior areas of resistance. Now I have that breakout that I need. Now I have that strong momentum that I love to see. We know where the market wants to go. Now all we need is, is to find the entry. In these cases, with these one, two, three breakout patterns, I'll mark off that high. I'll mark off of that low. I like to always drill down and find those prior swings and then grab either a trap setup below a prior swing or a failure setup off of the moving average or a pullback setup off of the moving average. Again, there's plenty of ways we can buy that low. The most important thing though for this first breakout setup is a one, two, three breakout pattern. Again, really make sure they jump off that moving average, jump out of that trading range, and then we'll drill down, grab our traps, grab our failures, our pullback setups. And again, we get a pretty good idea of where that market wants to go. Another breakout pattern I look for here is a pop and grind. A pop and grind is, is very common these days. Pop and grind breakouts or where they pop up and instead of pulling back and jumping, what happens is, well, they grind, right? They pop and they grind. They pop and they grind. Once we see that grind, that grind is an easy giveaway that the opposite side of this market is basically laying down and letting this market rise higher here. When that happens, we draw a nice tight trend line off that high, right? Don't bother big channels like that. Find that nice tight trend line drill it down, find that channel. And then again, I like to always go back, find some prior swings. My favorite entries are always those traps underneath those prior swings. But again, you know, sometimes we don't have a trap there. Sometimes we'll go for a failure as the bears come in and try to sell it. We can then look for that failure setup and then grab that first pullback off the moving average 
on the way up to, again, a retest of that high. And then, of course, up to that 40, 19, and three quarters. So trap, failure, and pullback. Now, guys and gals, I know most of you all have taken the free trading course on our website. You've learned all the setups. I mean, I get I get so many emails from you guys every week about how you've taken the free course, learned the setups, making money, trading this stuff on your own, right, on your own account. What an inspiration that's been for me. But I'll tell you, if you're here for the first time, if you haven't taken the free course yet, if you haven't learned all the traps, the failures, the pullbacks, the, the breakouts. What I'll do is I'll put a little link up here for you in the upper right-hand corner. Grab that little pop-up. Take the free trading course. If you're like me and you hate missing the best trades each day or you're taking too many losses, that free trading class, that will give you a, a full roadmap to follow. That way you'll know where to look for the right entries, how to qualify the right entries, and, and all the rules involved. I've got a lot of examples of how we apply those setups to our favorite markets. You'll love that free class. It'll give you all the roadmap that you need to get back on track and start growing your account again. So grab that link, get that pop-up, right? And and grab that, grab that free trading course. That way, the next time I say pop and grind, you'll know how we draw that channel. You'll know what time frames to use to drill down and find the entry setups, how to qualify everything along the way. Keep that on your radar for tomorrow. Now, again, I have a couple more breakouts I want to go over here on the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ has a few, the NASDAQ is a little bit different. You'll see here in a moment, we'll look at the NASDAQ here in a moment here. That is the buy side right now. What's the sell side? The sell side in all reality has really just as much opportunity. The only problem I see right now is momentum. Momentum is, this is a bull market right now. So trying to be a seller, we have to basically, if I want to sell in a bull market, I need two things. One, I need to be at a major turning point, right? And two is I have to see signs of exhaustion. Makes sense, right? So before I try to sell, let's make sure we're at an area where buyers will be taking profit and sellers might be getting short and you're we're sitting right at it right now, right? This this 75 half level is a major, major level from, and I apologize, I don't know exactly what date it was here, quite a while ago, a big, big bottom that can be used now as an area of resistance. So we're definitely at a major turning point right now. The problem is, is we need to see signs of exhaustion. Right now, we don't have that yet. We have a strong move up, we have a retest. Now what I'd like to do is, is start seeing these buyers now start to struggle. And then once they start to struggle, we can start to think about now where are their stops, right? Because remember, the easiest money you're ever going to make in when you're trying to sell is when you can anticipate the buyers getting caught, getting long into a major turning point like this, right? And you want anyone who's buying this pullback right now is asking for trouble. There's no reward up here, right? We've already, we, again, we're already where the market wants to go. We know that big pop-up wants to retest the high. We know these are the weak hands, right? This is not the smart money buying this pullback right now. Now, again, the buyers may get that breakout, but we're not there yet. You know, we're not there yet. We're at multiple levels of resistance. So one of my favorite kind of reversal trades is always that two-try failure into a first test pullback. Here's what it looks like. Well, you'd like to see it again at a major turning point. Good. Now, let's get these buyers coming in. Let's get the buyers trying once. Get those buyers trying twice. Once those signs of exhaustion start to show up, now we think, okay, where are my stops? And now I can start to trigger or start to start to uh, attack or sell into those stop losses. Now, remember, there's a big range down here and ranges act like magnets. And you know those bears would love to go all the way back down and take out that low from today, maybe even fill that gap that still hasn't been filled yet, right? There's a gap down there that still has not been filled yet. Again, different than NASDAQ. NASDAQ, not the same situation, but the S&P still has that wide open gap. So it's, it's not difficult to think that bears would love to get this short going. But right now, though, I need to see some exhaustion. Show me once, show me twice. Allow me now to sell right into those stop losses. Now, once we get that short and we're looking for that short going back down into that trading range, our job is not done yet. Now we can add to the position. Now mark off that low, 
mark off a new channel. And we know this already, find those prior swings, try to get above those prior swings. Sometimes you won't have those prior swings. So in those cases, get those buyers to come in, let them try to buy off the moving average. Once they try to buy that pullback, you know exactly where their pain is, traps, failures, whichever setup we get off the top of that channel, one of my favorites. In fact, I always tell my students, if you are not confident in trading that reversal off the high, this this first test, right, the first test off the high of that channel is almost a must-take trade. You know, it is it is LeBron James getting the basketball under the basket, put the thing in the hoop, right, in the baskets. It's, it's that same situation. That is our job is to grab that first test as we go lower. And then, guys, in all, in all reality, this could really get good here as it rotates off that high. One, two, find that channel, grab that new channel, and again, grab that short as we go lower. Now, if this thing really begins to collapse down here and does take out that gap fill, now think about the scenario here, and then we'll go to the NASDAQ here. Think about the scenario. That's a lot of momentum now. So what do we always talk about whenever we say, okay, strong move in one direction, what's gonna probably happen? It's probably gonna pull back and wanna retest again. So in those situations, what we'll do is go find a larger channel right? Think about some prior swings over here. Find a larger channel to line up. Wait for that nice bounce off of that low. Remember, all of that momentum coming down now, they're going to want to, the bear's going to want to bury this thing right back to retest that low again. Okay, so this point now, get back above the moving average. That's usually the key on these ones. Get back above the moving average, get those buyers to come in and try to buy the bounce, all that momentum, there's your failure, there's your pullback, and your retest of the low. At this point now, I'll bet you can, I'll bet we can start looking for a two try failure to buy it back up again, right? Does that make sense? So again, it's a two try failure to call the top at a major area of resistance that's showing signs of exhaustion. Probably the best trade of the whole thing, right, is that turn, trade that first test of that new channel, and then if we roll all the way over here, remember, all of that momentum, I don't care what level of support down is, is down there, when you have all of that momentum rolling over, you know they want to hit that first pullback off that new channel. And again, when I say hit that first pullback, it almost always will go, if you draw your channels correctly, it'll almost always go above that moving average. And again, you can rope in those buyers who are trying to buy it going back up into that trading range. Now again, these traps and failures and reversals, you're gonna learn a whole lot more about these setups inside that free trading course. So if I haven't convinced you yet already, definitely pause the video, grab that link that popped up there, learn the strategy, that way you'll know how to draw these channels, you'll know what the entries look like, you'll know more that I can cover here in this in this video. So lot of potential here on the S&P, both for breakouts going higher and reversals going lower here. Let's keep this moving though. Let's go, to the, let's go to the NASDAQ right now. NASDAQ is similar to the S&P, but as you'll quickly see here, we have a little bit of a, 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 a difference here right now. What's the most important factor here uh, on the NASDAQ? It's very similar in this sense. We really have a pretty strong move higher. The buyers have now retested that high. And so we're basically sitting here going, okay, what do you want to do? Do you want to break out and go higher? Okay, if we do break out and go higher, that major level of resistance, that is the big level that the S&P is dealing with right now. So this is one of the biggest differences between the S&P and the NASDAQ right now. The S&P, if you look at it kind of backwards here, right? What is that? Oh, May, what, May, May 14th, May 15th, something like that? Yep. So anyways, that, that prior support level is now being tested right here. Look at the S&P. Look at all that wide open space they have if they can push this thing higher here, right? Again, I'm thinking, I'm thinking 19 three quarters, but I mean, look at look at this potential for this kind of slingshot running higher. Now, you know, 4100 seems to be a little bit of a big of a big bite to take out of this thing right now. But you can hopefully see though the the S and P if they can push, they have a lot more open space to work with right now. The Nasdaq, the Nasdaq isn't any work. Well, it's close, but it's definitely not there. 
And I hope you can see the difference there, right? The NASDAQ has that level right here. So really, the NASDAQ has a little bit more work to do before it can really break up into this wide open space up here from that, you know, 1230 up to 12600 back to retest that high there. So the NASDAQ, again, very similar to the S&P. But again, when you look at the bigger picture on this thing, you can see we are, well, again, think about it. If we see a breakout right now, I have to be very careful on that breakout, don't I? You know, on the S&P, I can pretty much go, you know, guns blazing on that breakout. On this one, though, not so much, right? The NASDAQ has a little bit less open space there overhead until we run into that major area of resistance. So what that does is it we're definitely still the same thing. We definitely could try to break out here, but now we have to be a little more careful of our surroundings. So what do you think is the best breakout setup to trade this thing if we go higher? What's my concern? My concern is I don't want to buy too high. I don't want to buy too close to overhead resistance. In those situations, there's one very specific entry pattern or breakout pattern I like to use, and it's called a two-try breakout. You ready? Strong move up, shallow pullback, higher high in price, and a trap setup. Okay, these are great whenever we're worried. Well, I mean, honestly, these are great in, in pretty much every situation, but they really are fantastic whenever we're worried about some sort of overhead level of resistance. You know, I would love to think we're going to get some one, two, three breakout pattern here and, you know, and be able to buy into that. But obviously, that doesn't look too, too high probability, right? Now, maybe they will. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll break out and keep it going. You know, maybe they'll keep it pushing through that 12200. That's great. You know, for example, I, I think uh, I think a pop and grind, right? A pop and a grind. If we saw a big pop and grind, kind of a flyaway market, a runaway market there, if it popped and grinds through that area, yeah, absolutely. Then I could definitely use that breakout setup, get that right, get that pull back, get underneath some prior swings, rope in those bears below the moving average, use their stops as fuel into that first pullback, right, retest. Yeah, I, I, I like that idea. But again, that has to show me some pretty darn, that's a pretty impressive breakout going higher. It's definitely possible, so keep that on your radar. But looking at this you know, without anything spectacular here in the early part of the Asian session, if we see a real strong pop up and we see that shallow pullback and that higher high in price, that trap is the one you want to look for, right? That trap set up, that two-try trap is what you want. And this is very common. Anytime we see a strong move, a shallow pullback, and a higher high in price, I and mean, you can almost guarantee, I, I can't say guarantee on these videos, right? But it's about as close to a guarantee as you're going to get if you get that trap right below that prior swing. So that set up, look for it over here. And then what do you think? What, what, what do you think? Is it possible that we might get that, that strong pop? get that shallow pullback, that higher high in price, get that trap that then retest that high. And then what do you think? What do you think the odds are here? We run into a major turning point and then we start seeing some signs of exhaustion. Yes, one try, two try, all those stops now are sitting right there, ranges down below, big time area of resistance up overhead for in, in an overall bear market right now. This is exactly what we want to be looking at here for tomorrow. Once they get that retest, you know, get that right, make that money, buy in that trap, retest the high, because again, anytime we see a strong move, we should be looking for a retest of that high. Then we start watching for buyers once, buyers twice twice. Why twice? Because we're bullish. This is not a bear market. I can't get too aggressive on this. I have to let those buyers, remember, if I have momentum on my side, I can be aggressive with my entries. But if I don't have momentum on my side, I need something else to give me that edge. And that something else are stops getting hit. You know, because if I can sell short now into those stops getting hit now, now everybody's selling right? The, the bears are selling off resistance and the buyers are selling now because they're forced out of their long trades and there's nowhere to hide. When you get stopped out, you got to sell your way out of it. So that's one of the reasons why we use those failures to really get those reversals to work with us. And then as they go lower, 
right? As they go lower, this is where the easy part comes in. Now we find that new channel off that low, up around that high, and we start looking for that first test off the high of that channel. Again, I love traps, but I'll take any one of the entry setups we talk about in that in that video class that I mentioned earlier. So if they grab that uh, as well. I think another potential breakout, and this will also apply to the S&P as well, I think another possible breakout is a pop up into a trading range. Uh, makes perfect sense. I mean, that's what the S&P's doing right now. But, you know, look at the S&P. The S&P has a range right around that high, you know, or right around that prior low, that major resistance. So keep an eye on this. If it does break out into a trading range, what do we do? It's pretty simple. Uh, the range is a magnet. And so what you want to do is, is go out and look left, find levels of support, like prior highs, find levels of support, like trend lines, find levels of support, that you can go in and and combine with a pullback. Okay, let's say we say we, 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 we draw a support trend line there, right? Uh, the range is a magnet, okay? Ranges are magnets. So we pop up and go sideways here. Now you're gonna do is, is wait for that pullback. Let those bears come in. I'm not a big fan of picking that bottom. It can be difficult to kind of get the exact entry on this. The minute you buy that little dip is the minute it rolls over and stops you out and then goes without you. You know what I mean? So I don't try to I don't try to pick that bottom. I wait for the bears to basically show their cards. You know, I wait for them to show me what they want to do on that. Once they show their cards and the bears come in and try to get short, then we know we got them, right? Then we know we have all that momentum. The range is the magnet. You know they want to retest the high of that trading range. We just got to wait for those bears to, to, to literally kind of wrap that noose around their neck and we can buy you know, those stop losses for that run higher. I love range-bound markets, especially when there's a bullish bias to them and we can find some trend lines underneath. So I really like that setup as well. And I would imagine that would also apply to the S&P too. You know, the S&P may not be as likely to do that. But again, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. My job tonight is, is to plan my trades so I can then trade my plan when price moves quickly and confidently tomorrow in our trade room, which opened up at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Okay, so now we know some differences here on the NASDAQ going higher. The short side here is literally the exact same thing. And just going to repeat what I said earlier. I'm, I'm not going to go over too much of this again. But, but again, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about now, we've got that retest. So now get the buyers once, buyers twice, get that move going lower, find that new hidden channel and grab that short. If we get that failure and then that first pullback, again, I'm not gonna go over more details on that right now. We've covered that pretty well so far. But imagine now we take out that low, okay? Now at this point now, do I buy, do I buy down here? Well, you can eventually, but remember, that's a lot of momentum that we have here. And so what I'll usually do in those cases is, is draw a, I'll find a new channel. A lot of times what happens is, is this drop down will start to grind, right? It'll grind, grind, grind like that, right? Simple. Just draw that channel right off that low, bring it right up around that big high. And remember, what'll happen is the, sh the sellers who, who short off that high, where's their profit target? Their profit's down here, okay? So once they take their profit and the market bounces now up off that low, this again is where it's very tempting to want to buy this. And I learned this trick because I used to be I used to be caught in the wrong side of these all the time. When you have a big, strong move down like that, you know it wants to go back and retest that low. So you find that channel, and again, you rope in those buyers, right? 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I was the person buying that pullback. And that's how I learned this lesson. That's why I think I'm a good teacher and a good mentor for our, for our students in our trade room is because I I pretty much know the words to every wrong song to be playing as a trader. I, may, I think I made all the mistakes uh, when I was a new trader. And so when you get those big drops like that, I don't care what that support level is. Okay, all that momentum says it's very likely we retest that low. So I'd love to find another entry off the high of that new channel. And then, right, and then now, as we as we as we gap down here right now, we'll see if this is and this is legit, this is legit here right now. We may already be gapping down here as the market opens up, right? So as we go lower here now, get that double bottom. Right, get that double bottom, and then of course from there, it's that one, two, it's that same idea, right? That pop up, 
get that new channel and we're running it back up from there. Same idea, that two try, right? That two try failure and then grabbing that first test off of that trading, right? Off of that low. We'll see if this data is correct here or not. I may have to restart my charts here and see a big, big gap down here at the open. One of the nice things about recording these things live as the market opens up in Asia. How about some oil here right now? How's our oil doing? Wrapping things up here on the on the crude oil tonight. And by the way, if you're still watching this video right now, kudos to you. Uh, we are, what, 30 minutes into this video right now. And I'll tell you right now, if you're watching this video still, you are the person I make these videos for. So kudos to you. Great job on, on sticking around all the way to the end. What's the most important factor we have right now on the crude oil? As you can see, we had a bullish pop-up into our trading range. That, of course, turned into a breakout going lower. And then we pretty much have settled into a range down here with a bearish bias on this chart. So sellers, of course, right? They want to sell up around these highs, right? Sell those double top reversals. The bears, of course, also want to sell a breakout going lower. I would imagine the next objective for those bears is that 107.62, 108.12 area waiting below. What do the buyers want? Yeah, the buyers, again, they want to go back and retest that low, buy up from there. You probably can have a good idea of what type of trade I'd be looking for on that. And then if we do go higher here, the buyers definitely have a, a pretty, a pretty uh, difficult job ahead of them. They have to not only get up and do those highs, but you'll notice once they get up into those highs here, they run into another big, huge block of resistance here. So really to be a buyer right now going higher, we really have to get some very strong momentum so we can leverage that momentum for a retest of the high. I think a very big clue on this oil chart is this spike in channel. There was a spike up last week into that bull channel. The reason why I like this area as a pullback zone or reversal zone is because it's the base of that spike in channel, right? We oftentimes will see a price pop up, spike up into a channel, they want to pull it back and then bring it right back up from there. So I really think that 108, 107, 62 area, that will surely be an area to keep your eyes on tomorrow, not only for a profit target for the short side, but also for a possible reversal going back up into some of these obvious ranges. You know what I mean? There's obviously one range there, but I mean, come on, this whole thing could be one big range here. It makes perfect sense for these bears to run it lower and then pop it right back up as we go. Or if things really get crazy, remember these markets love to move in $5 increments. We're at 110 right now. 105 would be a very reasonable objective for the bears here coming next. So we'll see what happens here, but the, the bears definitely have the light edge here uh, at, at this point in the game right now. So what if we go up? What if we go down? This is obviously very different than the S&P and the NASDAQ. If we make that run higher, if we make that run higher, you guys already know this game plan, right? That'll be a retest of that high. It's a bull market. This is exactly where we look for those one, those two, right? Those two try failures into that new hidden channel. This is exactly the scenario we'll use something like that. Again, there's a range down there you want to use as your objective. We've got that two try failure. And again, could be a trap, could be a failure, could be a pullback combination as it come off that channel here. Or let's say, for example, they pop and they begin to grind. A pop and grind would be a great way to get a breakout going because those grinds, whenever it grinds like that, it's always kind of an easy giveaway. So mark off that high, you know, find that tight trend line off the high, bring it down to that big low, you got it, drill down, find that trap, get below that, get below that moving average to lock in the bears and buy in the stops and grab that pullback from there, right? Makes sense? Take that target off at that high, and then again, that next objective overhead here is 113.83. 113.83 is the big objective there for those bulls. Again, they've got to get this into pop and then, of course, really get it to, to go here. I would also not be afraid of a pop up, a pull back, and a jump off that moving average. I wouldn't be afraid of that either. You know, again, the buyers, I'm not going to buy that first pullback. 
right? We're not going to buy that pullback the same reason we wouldn't buy that pullback, right? We're not going to buy that first pullback, but if they can hold it and go, great. Now we get the momentum on our side. Now find that channel. Now find our levels and grab that first pullback. That's a great trade. Again, I'm not interested in the first one, but if they can break and hold through that high, one, two, three, jump, then I have enough momentum now to grab that first pullback, take some profit off at that high, and let that runner run to that 113 level that we mentioned earlier. What if we go lower here? If we go lower, it's it's pretty cut and dry at this point, right? We, we, we kind of already talked about this a lot. If we go lower, this will be simply a retest of that low, which is the perfect time now for a one try, two try, and a failure going back up, grab that, right? Grab that new channel and look for that retest of that high overhead. You know, that makes perfect sense as well. If we can get the bears to sell into that, we can use their stop losses as you know, pardon the pardon the, uh, the the metaphor, but as gasoline, right? As fuel, I guess. Pun intended on that one, I guess. And then, of course, we can grab that first pullback off of right off of that channel. So I, I like that reversal as well. We'll see if we can get that. You know, it doesn't seem like that's as likely right now, but we'll see. You know, we'll see. Or if we get a breakout, what's the break going to be? Boy, there is. You really have a lot of options when it comes to this breakout. It could be a one, two, three breakout. You know, pull back, hold that moving average, find that new channel, and drill down from there. Grab th that short off the high. Again, you know kind of where the market wants to go at that point. It could be a pop and grind, one of my favorites over the last few months. Pop and grind, find those traps, hit that trap. That will work very well as well. It could also be a, a, a two-try breakout too, right? Real strong move down, shallow pullback. Lower low in price. Anytime we see that, we know bears are looking at that prior, right? At that prior swing. Would love to use maybe some of these prior lows as an additional level of resistance on that. And I'll tell you, if you can, grab that channel off that low, off that high, right? Not necessary, but really does increase the odds for us and, of course, build our confidence on that short as well. So breakouts really have a, a, a great op opportunity here. And again, if this thing really runs lower here, you got to be thinking, find that channel, right? If it really, if it really punches it and runs lower here, all that momentum. So grab that channel, get up above the moving average, rope in those buyers trying to buy it back up, hit them right where their stops are, leave that target back down to retest that low, and then what? And then hit them with the two try. One, two, back up we go. Does it make sense, right? See how this little dance we play, back and forth, back and forth, right? We, we, we look at momentum. Momentum tells us what type of setups to look for, ranges, channels, it all comes together nice in a nice little symphony here, a nice little dance we do here every day in our trade room. I'll tell you, strategy's great, trade room's great. Speaking of which, we've got our game plan put together here for tomorrow. We know the game plan for tomorrow. Don't forget that big news we have on the schedule for tomorrow morning. Uh, tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern time in our trade room. We, we planned our trades tonight. Tomorrow, we'll trade our plan together. Tomorrow, I'll put all of the membership information you need down in the description of the YouTube video. If you're looking for a great place to come out and learn and trade along, if you're tired of missing the best trades each day, or you're taking too many losses and losing too much money, our trade room is designed for new traders to get their feet underneath them, right? Get that confidence going, right? Get, get them taking the right trades in the right time. Or if you're an experienced trader, I'll help you break some of those bad habits, get that mindset back on track, show you what a really reliable trade looks like. And once you kind of see it all come together, you'll find it pretty easy here as well. We get some great video classes, a great group in the trade room. I would love to have you to trade in right along with us. Don't be a stranger. Drop those questions in the comment section. If you guys have any questions, I'm always here to help out in the comment section. Also, too, don't be afraid to call the office. Um, I know I do speak pretty quickly on these videos to make them as short as I can, but we'll slow it down. So call the office. We can slow it down. Make sure you have all the information you need. Uh, they'll get the broker, the charts, the data, get everything you need put together so you're ready for trading with us in our trade room. All right, guys, that's it for me tonight, though. Hope you learned a bunch with it. Hope you, hope you use it tomorrow to make some money tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll see you tomorrow in the trade room. If not, we'll come back tomorrow night. We'll do it all again. In the meantime, be well. 
well out there. Be nice to each other, will you? And you better be here tomorrow. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.